What are some guy secrets girls don't know about? Many men have anxiety and or depression but we will not talk about and will get moderately annoyed at you for bringing it up. Holy sh this got gold. Thank you kind stranger. I remember when I thought this was a successful post when it had only like 30 upvotes. Sometimes we pee on the poo stains in the toilet because we are too lazy to use the scrub. Sometimes we don't talk to people cause we don't want to intimidate them. I might see a girl with a cool shirt on but I don't want to make her think I'm coming on to her or something. Rather than freak her out that a 6 feet 6 guy thinks she looks good today, I just leave her alone. Especially if we're on an elevator or something where she can't leave if she actually is uncomfortable. We get our red too. Can confirm I was molested by a neighbor's babysitter. 15f. When I was 7. Sex isn't all we want in a relationship. I'd rather be with someone who understands me but only does it once in a while than someone who I have sex with every day but don't connect with emotionally and mentally. Some of us are into things like cooking, cleaning, makeup, fashion, etc. It doesn't necessarily mean we're gay. Please don't tell us to man up. A lot of us were constantly told that growing up whenever we tried to express ourselves so you saying it will often bring up bad memories. Men can be abused. Men can be our ed. Men also tend to be more suicidal because society tells us we're weak if we try to discuss these things. No, we don't enjoy being our ed by a hot girl, and we often don't talk about it because people will often straight up tell us we're lying about it if we do. If we haven't carried in all the shopping in one go, we haven't done it right. IDK if other guys feel this too, but I'm always afraid of accidentally making women feel uncomfortable in my presence. For example when I happen to walk in the same direction as a woman in front of me for a while, and I'm not even interested in women in the first place. Maybe this is more of a dad secret but, I don't babysit my own kids. That's called fathering damn it. My dad served in the Pacific during WW2, a kid from the Bronx. He had never been out of the Bronx in his entire life. Then he got sent to New Guinea, decades later, as he lay dying in the hospital bed. He told us, as his young friends were being slaughtered by other young men, just before they died, they always cried for their mothers, never for their fathers, always for their mothers, he said, they were just kids, just kids being slaughtered by other kids, and then they died, in his arms, their last words were always, where is my mother, where is my mother, where is my mother, never for their fathers, that affected him for his entire life, and had lived a long time. He was the lucky one. My dad fought in WWII on the European front and said the same guys would always cry out for their mothers. He reinforced how important it was to be gentle and nurturing to a boy. If you compliment my appearance I will probably remember forever. I still remember when a girl in college told me I look nice with my beard when I first grew it out. I've had a beard ever since. I'm a woman. In college I complimented this random guy in line for coffee that he smelled really nice. It wasn't a pickup line or anything I just enjoyed complimenting people. About a year later we ended up having a class together and I didn't recognize him at all. He came up to me and thanked me again for the compliment I gave him a year ago and said he hasn't forgotten about how nice that was for a stranger to be so upfront and to compliment him. We'll be married 7 years in June. I remember 2 years ago when a girl told me my eyes are beautiful. I've had eyes ever since. After a shower. We have no problem drying our balls and face with the same towel. Most of the time we try to dry the face first, then the sack. But sometimes we have to go back to the face. We just hope we use an uncontaminated part of the towel. And then by the next day the towel forgets and it resets. Truly one of nature's miracles. I'm secretly an emotional wreck. I just hide it. As an older man, we don't expect you to look like a supermodel as we age together. Yes. At times I do see you as I did 30 years ago and every wrinkle and flaw disappears. Yes, there are times I see every wrinkle and flaw, and know how you got every one of them. They are beautiful too. It's not uncommon for us to genuinely think you're beautiful without any makeup. This comment will be buried, but those perfectly round toilets suck. It's super annoying when your junk touches the inside of the toilet bowl. The oval toilets like in most public toilets are much better. Your chances of getting what you want out of us are infinitely higher if you tell us directly. I can vouch for this. 
I was upset with myself for not picking up what I thought were clear hints. When he responded frustrated with, I don't understand hints just tell me what you want woman. He really helped me communicate better. I don't know why we grow up thinking we can't directly ask for things. Imagine hinting what you want at Chipital. I just spent the last hour shouting all of these to my husband in the other room. And him replying, yep. When I told mine the title, he said we've all tried that one thing. Took a couple of hours. But I finally came across it a few posts up. Bunch of snitches in this thread. At least they didn't disclose any of the serious stuff like stuff about that meeting we all have once a year. We don't talk about that. We don't care how popular or unpopular you are with other women. So it shouldn't factor into how you value yourself when dating. When people come crying to us, our first inclination is to fix the problem. Since this is often not possible, lead with something along the lines of can I vent for a minute? Or anything that signals to us this is just a time for active listening, rather than a problem solving session. Otherwise it's just awkward WTF is going on here, in our heads. Simply saying you need to cry tells us exactly what we need to do. As a man I support this message. When we want to be alone, it's not that we don't want to be around you. It's that we don't want to be around anyone for a bit. I get this one way too well. I go through bouts where I just don't want to talk to anyone regardless of how close we are. If we tie down anything in the back of a pickup truck or trailer it's physically impossible for us not to stand back and say that's not going anywhere. This is shockingly accurate, might even be accompanied by shaking the object a bit, and looking at your friend for confirmation that he also saw how much it's not going anywhere. No matter how poorly secured the object may be, you can always guarantee that's not going anywhere. These guy secrets seem to fall into three areas, male genitalia, toilet habits and the lack of psychic powers when it comes to women. Got it. You forgot the fact that all men know who killed JFK but we signed a non-disclosure agreement. Turns out you vanquished a 127 committed suicide by two shots to the back of his head after this post. R.I.P. There is no amount of hot sex that will stop us from masturbating as soon as we're alone. It's two separate releases and you just filled up the spank bank. We really do think your hair is good. It looked good before and after you got a haircut. If looked good curly and it looked good straight. It looked good when you woke up and when you made it. As long as it's shaped like the hair we gave girls on stick figures when we were 5 years old. We think it looks good. I wish more girls understood that. My hair is a mess I know it is and I think that's effing adorable pls just be cute too. Seriously, I don't think girls really know how good they look with messy hair. We don't get the hint. Saying I almost broke my neck in the driveway is not the same as asking us to shovel it. In my mind I'm thinking thanks for the heads up. I'll be careful. Subtle hints do not work. Obvious hints do not work. Anything short of spelling it out ABC style at us will not work. When I try to pick up on hints I get it wrong almost every time. Can confirm. Source. Good friend colleague at work asked me if I noticed anything different about her. I said it looked like she lost weight. She followed that up with I'm 5 months pregnant. You can squeeze the head of your penis and the tip lips will move like a mouth and you can talk to it. Oftentimes, we genuinely don't care where we go to eat because we're just hungry and want food. Any food. As long as you eat some too. 99.9% .9 of the time. I don't care, I'm not being a pushover by having you choose what to eat, because I might as well fry some hot dogs and cook pasta, add ketchup and voila, dinner, but I already know that isn't fancy enough, so you choose. Luckily, I found someone that'll actually eat that, so our days of not knowing isn't very indecisive, we just raid the cupboard and freezer and make ourselves whatever, and we don't mean our fries. I'm a girl and I've found out through the years that when guys say something, don't think too much into it, like what's the hidden meaning, don't overthink it, guys normally say stuff that should be taken at face value, it confounds me every time I hear this, like, how is being direct and straightforward with your words not the first expectation when anyone hears someone speak, what kind of inefficient communication skills have developed among women that the default is to not trust the immediate meaning of words. At the urinals we typically pee on soap bars. I saw plastic mats to reduce splash damage and smell. Do you mean bath soap or a urinal cake? 
because I've had the pleasure of never having to pee on soap or ice yet in my life. The mental struggle we have to go through to not scratch around our groin in a public setting, it'll take 100% of my willpower to not do it, the itching can drive me insane yet the euphoria from actually scratching it is so good. I often imagine this must be what it's like scratching a dog's ears. There is a reason why men's pants have deep pockets that are deep enough to reach Balls Vegas. The nod. When you see a guy you don't know, or kind of know but don't really know well enough to talk to walks by, you give a subtle nod of your head, which they return. I talk to my wife about it and she confirms that women do not do this, but that they sometimes smile instead. Ladies. You need to slap us across the face and yell F me now at the top of your lungs in order for us to get a hint. Every guy has, at one point, used their erection to hold up a towel upon exiting the shower with an unwanted erection. Our own butler. We desperately want you to toss us things instead of just handing them to us. When I asked my husband for confirmation on this, he said, he, yay, it's fun to catch things. Oh good. I throw stuff at my husband all the time and often wondered if I was being silly. Now I wonder if I should throw even more stuff. Okay toss not throw. Unless I am whooshed. No matter how you shake and dance, the last two drops go in your pants. Credit to you Supagisusks. So as someone with male genitalia, peeing standing up is a regular occurrence in my life. While convenient and time efficient one significant downside is the occasional dribble over the next few minutes when you don't quite clear the line. That was until a couple hours ago when my friend graced me with the knowledge of the double gooch push. For those that aren't aware the gooch, also known as the perineum, is the surface area between the anus and the genitals. A pretty much an important part of the human anatomy in everyday life. But, after you're done urinating, if you push on your gooch several times it clears the rest of the urine out of your system that would inevitably end up making its way out in an inconvenient fashion. Now I was skeptical. How could I have lived 24 years of my life without knowing this crucial piece of the draining the main vein process? But after trying it, I can confirm, it not only completely empties the tank, it allows you to hold your head high knowing you can continue your day with dry and aware and a clean member. Try it for yourself and tell everyone you know, you won't be disappointed. As a favor, I worked on a girl's car one time and got pretty dirty. Afterwards, she asked me if I wanted to come inside and take a shower. I told her no because I hadn't brought any clean clothes to put on after the shower. She just kinda giggled. Yeah, us guys aren't exactly too bright when it comes to reading between the lines. How many nights have you laid awake replaying this what if in your mind? I've lost count. Similar story for me. In 9th grade, my friend and I were hanging out with a third friend, who was a girl I had a crush on. Eventually she invites us back to her house to continue hangs. And turns out her parents are out of town and her older brother was staying with his girlfriend. So it's just the three of us. We watch some shun TV and eventually my friend says it's getting late and he has to go home. So he does and now it's just me and her sitting on the couch watching Seinfeld. Eventually she turns to me and says would you like to see my new bathing suit. In my brain, I thought she meant she would go get it, bring it back in her hands, and hold it out and show it to me. I really wasn't interested in that scenario, so I said nah. She said oh, okay. We watched TV for another 20 minutes then I went home. I figured out what she meant 11 years later. That physically hurt me. A girl told me if I wanted to see her new tattoo that's on her upper thigh. I said hell yes. She proceeded to show me a sketch of it from her phone. Dang, I was in 11th grade and a girl I was seeing invited me over to hang out. We were alone at her house, in her bedroom and she asked me if it bothered me that she was not a virgin. I said nope and continued being a virgin. Oh bro that sucks. R.I.P. younger you. Bought a new car. Girl told me the back seat had a lot of space to do whatever. Told her the trunk had more space and showed her it. She left because she had class. On the way home I realized what she meant and I cock blocked myself. I had a girl tell me that my haircut looked nice. I've kept that same haircut for 4 years since then. Dude I got a compliment about some shorts I was wearing that I was unsure if they looked good or not. Those are now my favorite shorts. 15 years later I'd really like my husband to stop wearing the first shirt I ever complimented him on. It's too small and has holes in it, but I can't throw it away and he always finds it. We can't move our penis without closing our butthole. 
Help I can't stop. You just made men all over the internet clench their A. That's power you can't buy. Ash to superpowers. I'm a female and clenched. Dunno why. Dude this is revolutionary I've never realized. Holy sh this is huge I didn't even know this. I'm gonna wait for people to deny that they tried this. I'm pooping. Have made a mess but confirmed. Just because we're in the shower for an abnormally long time doesn't mean we're jerking off. Guys like to have long hot showers too ya yeah, no. Yeah sometimes I just zone out and stand there for like 5 minutes. 40. Yeah, it's freezing off outside the shower. There has been times that I've tried to get out of my shower. Felt the cold air from outside the curtain hit me. Then proceeded to get back in and turn the water back to hot. I like hugs. You monster I bet you like hand holding too. F I'm degenerate SMH. Nice try Buzzfeed. Yeah like why the hell do I keep stumbling on what seem like legitimate articles all over the internet that reference Reddit uses as a primary source of factual information? I'm not staring at you. I'm zoned out thinking about how I'd start a brewery in medieval England whilst my eyes just happen to be facing your direction. That awkward moment when you zone back in and you are staring at someone you don't know that wasn't in front of you a moment ago. And they are looking back at you. Sorry. I was wondering if I could conquer 12th century England with a single firearm and zoned out. Guys also like to be walked up to and asked out. My current girlfriend. Soon to be fee and K. Ask me out. We worked at the same company. And she just came up to me and said hey Justy Burger. I think you and I should go get dinner tonight. I asked her who else was going. And she said I think it'd be nice if it was just you and me. So yay. That was pretty cool. There is a guy at my office I really want to ask out and you might have just given me the courage to do it. Happened to me once. But it was another dude who thought I was gay. Still flattering. Felt good. If you have a son. Don't rush into his room and demand that he get up immediately to do chores or some sh. He definitely has morning wood and would appreciate not needing to hide a boner from his mom. Give him like 5 minutes. Also just not rushing into your kid's room in general. One day they are gonna run in there without knocking first and just catch an eye full of dick. There is no lock. So please knock. Or you might see cock. Cannot stress this enough. Do you know how awkward it is to have your mum wake you up and tell you to get straight out of bed to do something? Let me deal with my pitched tent before I get out of bed please. I was sick when I was in my early teens maybe and some my neighbor and a couple other girls that I was friends with in the area stopped by to see how I was because I had been down and out for a few days. I'm in my room with all the curtains drawn feeling like I'm dying and under like three thick blankets. My mom thinks let's let them in and they can see for themselves. She lets them into my room and tries to tell me to get up. That I have company. When I just grunt dismissively, she grabs the covers and rip them back so I can't try to roll over and bury myself in them. Thankfully I had a shirt and pajamas bottoms on, but I can never understand her thought process after all these years as to why she thought that was a good idea. Guys have damn near zero ability to hold a grudge if an apology is genuinely offered and accepted. Hell. Most guys have a great friend in their lives that started out with some shtime misunderstanding but worked itself out. Women can nurse a grudge in ways most men cannot fathom. Just because I got pee on the wall, doesn't mean I'm being lazy. It's because it decided to come out a different direction than where the hose was pointed. The good ole fork in the road. Morning wood can be cool for wake up sex. Not cool if you have to pee. We have to do all sorts of acrobatic maneuvers to pee. I myself like to do the Michael. My wife believes that morning wood is only for sex. She tried waking me up by hopping on, only to have me wake up and throw her off because I had to pee and my bladder hurt. Awakens. Rights closed I gotta go. I would say I'm more of a plank man myself. That when you fling your underwear off your leg and catch it, you feel like a ninja. 100% shared by both genders. So do we. Osh they are onto us. Just play it cool. It's not that we can't take hints. We are just afraid of looking too far into something. If someone is flirting with me I have the dilemma of is she actually into me or is this just how her personality is? I can't count the number of times that I ruined potential relationships or made an A out of myself when I moved from the west coast of the US to the south. In the south, they use honey, sweetie, and oling like those in the west use dude. I thought every woman I met was flirting with me. They were not. I live in the north and whenever I hear a girl call me hun or sweetie, 
which is very rare here, it's always super flattering and I can completely see how you got that impression, exactly, take the hint and it was what we thought, but, flirting successful, take the hint and I was wrong, relation with her ruined, entire group shames me until the heat death of the universe, it's like something I saw on reddit a while back, 1. Girls don't casually compliment guys because chances are it won't be taken as platonic. 2. Guys tend to be complimented so rarely they assume it's not platonic. I feel like I probably butchered it from the original but hopefully that makes sense. If it is hot outside, and you see a guy do some wacky dance, they are just unsticking their balls. You fool, you've destroyed us. Shrinkage. Like a frightened turtle. I was in the pool. It shrinks. Also flaxed vs erect difference. An 8 inch cock can look tiny when it's completely shrunken. As my man Paul Kelly says, from little things, big things grow. There is an unwritten rule of bathroom urinal etiquette that is never taught to young men, but is somehow universally known. When a man enters a public restroom to pee in the urinal, he is to occupy every other available urinal from other urinating men, meaning, the prime peeing positions are in urinals 1. 3 and 5 if that is available, 2 and 4 should only be occupied if there are no other choices. If, by some unfortunate circumstance, you come across urinal 1 and 4 in use, with 2 and 3 open, always go for urinal 3. When 4 leaves it balance it back out to odd numbered urinals being used. We used to talk about this in college, we called it urinal theory and it was an extensive and active field of study. Only weirdos choose to piss in the urinal next to you when there are plenty of open urinals along the wall. Also if we have to use the toilet to piss, we tend to piss on the side of the bowl to make less noise, whisper piss. How often we fantasize about saving the day from terrorist attack or something, yeep. I'm the world's greatest action hero, in my own head, I've saved numerous aircraft, boats, family members, and beautiful women, in my own head. Pee shivers. I've never felt so connected to my fellow man than knowing every guy in the world understands these two words.